Privets. Is that okay? Yeah. Hi, how are you? Uh, first of all, uh, really nice to be here one more time. It's my second time here in Russia, so super happy to be here. And today we're going to talk about building conversational apps with Firebase and Google Actions. Have you been in the presentation before? Yeah? So basically what we're going to do now is go deeper into coding and check how we can combine Google Actions with Firebase. So first of all, I would like to introduce you uh, why right now voice and AI is such a hot topic. Um, if you've been watching the trends before, before it was everything about mobile first, right? A few years ago, especially in Google I.O., everything was mobile first. Think mobile first. Right now we have something different that is related with AI first. So if we check the trends, basically, uh, during the last years, the A AI and also the Google Assistant is such a trend. So right now, as developers, we have more tools to get involved with voice or another things like AI. In my case, I really enjoy to work with sound. I really enjoy to work with AI. I'm going to explain a little bit better later. So it was a really nice opportunity to me to mix my passion about sound, like music, and uh, coding. Why not? So basically, what does it mean for the users to start using AI or sound? We can go basically from this to be in a place everybody was with their cell phone, to basically have more interaction with everybody. Um, besides the kind of addiction that we can have when we are social socializing or having dinner with somebody and everybody is looking at their phones, right now we can be a little bit more free and just use sound. That's why we can, we actually it's a good way to focus into sound on these kind of devices. So we have this thing that is called AI first, right? We have machine learning. Everybody's talking about machine learning. If I mention machine learning, companies are like, oh, wow, you're the best. But let's think how, as developers, we can actually use machine learning. At the same time, we had speak recognition, OK? So we have another tool that we can use to create better apps. Basically, I can have somebody start talking, and my app can recognize what I'm saying if my accent is not really bad most of the time. And third one, language understanding. If you have been already involved with, uh, for example, Google Translator, right now that I'm in Russia, I need it a lot. Beside previous, I have to keep thinking about Google Translator. Um, you have the chance to, for example, take a picture and use AI to recognize which language is in the paper and then use a real-time translation. So we have all these three tools. And right now, we can combine both of them and use Google Actions. So with Google Actions, if you heard before the, the other presentation, it's not only uh, related with the Google Assistant. Actually, we can use um, for example, another displays, we can use it in our phone. In my case, I travel a lot, so it's kind of hard to go with my Google Assistant everywhere. So most of the time, I play around with my cell phone. I use the Google Assistant there. So besides have the opportunity to have it in different kinds of devices, it's already uh, ready in different languages. Uh, really proud to say that is, um, I'm from Argentina, that's why you can hear this accent, like, where, where is this girl from? So, um, really happy to say that actually it's ready in Russian, Spanish, and even Latin Spanish, not only English. Uh, it means, like, not only as developers, only as creators, we can create more things and reach more audience. So again, what does this mean for a developer? 
Well, in my case, um, I'm pretty happy to be a developer right now. Ten years ago, being a developer maybe was related with playing around QBasic or even Visual Basic, if somebody here knows what I'm talking about. Uh, but right now, we can play with sound, with AI, without even being a data scientist. So I believe that we are in really excited times to play um, with AI and being a software developer. So let's see how we can actually create new apps with the Google Assistant. First of all, we're going to use the Google Assistant. The Google Assistant will be the conversation that we're going to have with somebody. Second, we are going to use actions on Google. Okay? With actions on Google, uh, we are going to create actions to actually um, use the Google Assistant and even have more functionality. So basically, you have a small device and you can create stuff. Uh, isn't it cool, isn't it? And then we have the different devices. Again, we are not only having the Google Assistant, we also have our mobile phones and other things like IoT. So let's start talking about actions on Google. Um, you're going to have actions on Google, and you're going to have the possibility to um, get involved with this platform and create your own conversations. So uh, what we are going to see today is my actually conference assistant. Um, I've been traveling a lot during the, the last weeks, and actually I don't remember how many flights I have this week, more like five, six. Um, I got one of my friends told me, Laura, you have, you have to maybe hire a PA, PA, a personal assistant. And I was like, it sounds okay, but I don't want to hire somebody. So why not let's create our own conference assistant? So sounds like a plan, right? So I started to research and check my, uh, and check my schedule and check which kind of conference I have and which kind of information it will be useful for me. So let's see how it works. First of all, we have um, our device, OK? As I mentioned before, you can use your Google Assistant, or you can use your own device, your smartphone, OK? So basically, I'm going to start asking an action that it will be, OK, Google, talk to my conference assistant. Uh, it sounds really nice, right? I have my own conference assistant. And then with that action, our device is going to go, it's going to call actions on Google and it will already know, okay, I'm going to trigger your uh, personal um, conference assistant and I will create actions, okay? So basically, if you've been working with a Google Assistant, um, you can not only use it with voice, you can use this uh, also as a chatbot. So the first action that it's going to do is um, take that voice and do speak to text. That's going to do uh, actions on Google. OK? Second, we have Cloud, Google Cloud, right? So with Google Cloud, it's gonna, uh, what it's going to do is, OK, I already have my text. I already know what is the conference assistant, I'm, so I'm going to do some action regarding this. So once that I say hello to my assistant, it would already know, like, OK, which is your favorite topic? That's going to be my next action. It's like, it's smart. It already knows what it's going, what's going to do next. So of course, in my case, I say fire race, right? And then with that topic, I will have available a few actions, OK? So we have a few things here. First of all, Google Actions. Second, Cloud, right? And third, we have to check a way to uh, make our device understand what is Firebase, first of all. What is a topic? Uh, it should be available to understand what I'm saying, like, OK, this is my own assistant about conference. What is a conference? So how we do that? If we were trying to do the same thing a few years ago, 
I will say like, okay, no worries, I need to hire somebody that tries to uh, know something about natural language. It will be super hard. So imagine also to do a lot of algorithms related with language. Imagine if I want to do the same thing, not only in English, also in Spanish. So for that, we have another tool that is going to help us. Again, so we have to um, be available to say something, to say an action, right? So in this case, if we talk to our device and say, tell me about the talk with Firebase and IoT during my last visit to the city, OK? So in this case, as you can see, there are a few words here that are highlighted, right? Firebase, IoT, maybe because they are related, they can be topics about the conference. Second, we have city. City is another highlighted word. So the, the user, first of all, knows what is a city. But what about the computer? So basically, there will be an entity that it will say, OK, I know that CD can be London, Nizhny Novgorod, or somewhere else. Let's see how we can make it. So remember that I was trying to mention that if we were trying to do this a few years ago, it would be pretty hard. I don't know a lot about natural language recognition. I don't have a master in data science. I'm just a software developer. So right now, we have Dialogflow. With Dialogflow, we don't have to care about how the language is using, right? To translate to a different language. With that, we're going to just use Dialogflow. So with Dialogflow, we are, not, we are going to create intents and entities. So let's see um, which one is going to be related here. So here is a Dialogflow console. Uh, how many of you here have used Dialogflow? Raise your hand. Awesome. Cool. So if you were playing around, it's not that hard, actually. As I mentioned before, I really like to play around music and sound. So I decided to see what else can I do as a developer with sound. Um, in this case, for example, we can create intents. Intents is going to be the action that the user is going to trigger. Okay? In this case, what is your favorite topic? Or my favorite topic is Firebase. My favorite topic is IoT. So I need to create that intent so my device would already know that I will generate an action. OK? So basically, we have the training fra phrases. And here, I can say, I want to hear about machine learning. Um, I love Firebase and Google Cloud. So you as you can see, you have the different words highlighted. So those are going to be my entities. Let's see how actually we can create that. OK? So at first, uh, we were having just Google Actions and then Cloud. But wait, there's even more. In the middle right now, we have Dialogflow. Dialogflow is going to be like the one that's going to do all the magic for us. It's going to understand, actually, that when I say hi, it's my welcome hi. So it's going to do some action. So it basically, it's going to create the flow to have a conversation. And also, uh, in the case that here, when I say, well, I love to hear about Firebase, it's, it's going to recognize that Firebase is an entity, and I will do some action with that. So again, if we check uh, the platform, we, we're going to have intents. Again, an intent is just a way to say uh, uh, something, right? And Dialogflow will generate an action with that. The thing is that we have different stuff here. First of all, we can generate an action with different training quotes, like, I love Firebase. Uh, would you like to hear something about Firebase? So if we put all our training quotes over there, it's going to be easier to recognize your dialogue for and generate an action. Second, we're going to have actions and parameters. We're going to talk a little bit about that later. And we can generate a response. So again, to do some uh, recap, let's talk about what is an intent, OK? 
So it's going to try to map what I'm saying and the action that it should trigger. Okay? So if I say talk about Firebase, it would already know which action it's going to do next and, and it's going to do something. So that's my intent. The user knows that it's going to do something with my device. So basically, I just need to tell which action. Okay? And of course, each action can have more than one, um, more than one intent. So uh, we're going to see how we can create intents and like, what is the best way to proceed with this. And then, as I mentioned before, each intent can have training phrases. So if I just create one training phrase that is going to be, I like Firebase, right? If I say, I love Firebase, maybe it's not going to be the same. It will say, OK, I don't know what you're saying, right? So if we put more training quotes over there, it's going to be easier for Dialogflow and Google Actions to uh, create a natural conversation. We are humans, right? So we were talking about this before, like what is more important to have a natural conversation or just what, is the, the, what the user needs? Uh, in my case, I believe that it's a balance, but as we are humans and we are trying to talk with the device, we have different ways to say something, right? So we have to think about that, like the other person that is trying to talk is a human. So we need to make like a natural conversation and again, so then we have the different topics. So as you can see here, we have machine learning, Firebase, cloud. Uh, all of these words are highlighted because before I create an entity, OK? So in this case, I have different training phrases, just two in this case. And then we have parameters. So basically, a parameter is if you've uh, been uh, playing around functions before, of course, we already know that we can have different parameters. In this case, if I ask, what is your favorite color? I will know that my parameter is um, a color, actually, right? So uh, with parameters also, we can make uh, the conversation with required parameters. Like, I need a color to continue my conversation. If you don't answer me any color, it's like, I don't know what you're saying, OK? Second, we have the entities. Remember that I was mentioned topics, Firebase, Cloud, IoT, right? So we, those will be like keys, highlights, that Dialogflow is going to recognize. And basically, we can do actions with that. In this case, I create an entity that is called topic. And with those topics, I can check which technology I would like to know about my last conferences. Again, in this case, it's not required. It's optional. But we have good news already. So in this example, you're going to see that I'm going to ask the, the assistant is going to ask me what is my favorite color. So imagine that if I have to put every color that already exists. I will, I'm, a, I'm kind of a lazy person. So if I can do something that is already done, even better. So we already know things like cities, right? Google is smart enough to, to know which kind of cities we have, location, time, countries. So we can use these pre-built entities, right? And just use it. And Google is going to populate with the values already there. And second, we have developer entities. So the developer entities are values that we are going to create. If I just say topic, actions on Google or Dialogflow doesn't know what is a topic. A topic can be maybe, in this case, it's Firebase IoT. But what if I want to talk about movies? What if, if I want to talk about food, right? So we need to um, take these kind of values and show to the console which kind of values are we working on. Well, in this case, as I mentioned before, you can create your own entity. In this case, it's topic, right? And uh, in this case, I just put a few values. 
Firebase, Machine Learning, Android, Google Assistant, and Actions on Google. And in fact, let's say, for example, AOG. AOG is Actions on Google. So you can have more than one value and use synonyms to um, basically refer to AOG. In this case, it can be AOG or Actions on Google. OK, and second, we have the different prompts. So if we think about the basic example of what is your favorite color, what is your color, let's say that um, color is a required value, right? So the user don't, an don't answer or is pretty shy, right? We can create prompts to actually ask about that value and then uh, relate with this entity, in this, in this case, color, or maybe it can be topic. And let's go to the funny part. We have something that is called fulfillment, right? We're going to work, uh, work a lot with dialog flow, but then, of course, we need to create and do more stuff here. So basically, we can choose uh, to use our, an inline editor that basically the environment is going to be with Node.js. My background, I'm a JavaScript, a JavaScript person. Yeah, the dark side, <laughs> JavaScript. And um, basically, you can use an inline editor to create an environment, or you can actually upload your own webhook. So for that, we can use a JSON. In this case, um, my friend JSON is like everywhere. So basically, you can create parameters. As you can see, this is an example about um, uh, a context that has food, that has protein, everything. But what if I want to do something else, to have my own webhook to do some actions related? Well, here we go. We can use Firebase. Where, how many of you already know Firebase? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. Cool. Well, Firebase is a cool platform uh, to, um, for developers. It has different features. Um, so in this case, we're going to use just a few of them. Um, and of course, it's not only related with the Google Assistant. If you are a mobile developer, you can use push notifications. Um, also, if you're working with your own startup, it's a really good platform to create. And just in this case, as developers, have more time to have fun and just focus into the real code, right? So to have more time and have fun, actually, we can use Firebase with a Google Assistant. How is it going to work? Basically, we're going to have the Google Assistant, right? We're going to ask something like, what is your favorite color? OK? Oh, tell me about my last conference in Nizhny Novgorod. So in this case, we are going to create something in Dialogflow related with what we already saw, create our own entities, right? create our own topics. And then with Dialogflow, what it's going to do is go into our full fulfillment webhook. right? And then it's going to be related with cloud functions in Firebase. We're going to check how. And then we can interact with Firebase in many different ways. In this case, we can actually use the real-time database. Um, also, we can use Firestore, right? Or uh, also storage. So why we are using cloud fun functions and why we are creating our own webhook and not just using our internal tools? Uh, first of all, we can combine all the features that we already have with Firebase with Actions on Google. So, in my case, first, I've been a Firebase developer, and then I've been using Actions on Google. So if you already been using Firebase, you just have to learn a few things about Actions on Google and just mix both of them. Second, uh, in the case of using just um, one index.js, you have less opportunities or less chances to build more. Simple that. 
And third, of course, we can follow our best practices. If we are just using the internal tool, uh, maybe we cannot have a Git or create our own repository or do even testing. So what do we need, basically? If you didn't uh, use Firebase, first of all, you need the Firebase Clean. So remember, you're going to use NPM, and you're going to uh, install Firebase tool. Second, of course, we need to log in. Once that we log in, yeah, this is my console, you, as you can see. Uh, you're going to have these. And then, second, you need to connect your actions in Google with Firebase. So in this case, what we're going to see is Firestore, a little bit about cloud functions, and combine this with a Google Assistant. Again. All this is based in Node.js library. So if you've been playing around with JavaScript, it's pretty simple. It's the same environment. And we're going to see like, how we can actually create our own intents. Remember what is an intent, right? We can actually use um, another parameters like ask something, right? And create um, our own values. So first thing that we need to do is deploy our fulfillment. Again, it's not mandatory to use Firebase, but for me, it's been pretty simple to combine both things. So I really suggest that, especially if you are going to use Actions on Google at the first time. So once that you connect your project with Firebase and you already have created your Actions on Google, do Firebase deploy. That simple. When you do Firebase deploy, um, if you go, this is a Firebase console. If you go to the Firebase console, you're going to see in functions, actually, that you're going to have a URL. You have to choose that URL, copy that, and then you have to paste here in the place that is fulfillment. As you can see, you're going to see webhook, and you're going to have this um, enable. So and then, after that, you can actually connect your Firebase project with Actions on Google. And then what you have is a chance to test, basically, um, what you've been doing in Actions on Google directly with Dialogflow. So what we are going to do now is do some testing and show you how you basically can create your action. Um, as Elisa mentioned before, we have different kinds of integrations. I really suggest to take a look not only with the Google Assistant. Today, what we're going to do is use the Google Assistant. And then later, you can use with different platforms like web, Facebook Messenger, and it's not that hard. And even easier, you can combine with cars. So, uh, the different kinds of cars is, as Elisa mentioned before, a different way to not only use voice, also use images if you need it. So we have a different kind of resources to use this. I'm going to share with this, um, uh, this with you. And of course, you need to try to get involved with the community. But let's see the demo, and let's see how everything is, is going to break now. I'm kidding. Are you excited to see the demo? Yes? Um, I don't see you. Um, maybe you, you're you waiting for lunch, like, OK, stop talking. I'm hungry. So here we have our um, dashboard, right? So and then we are going to, this is my test app, right? So here, basically, I don't need even a device. I can just use this platform. So I will start talk to my test app. Sure, here's the test version of my test app. Hi, Rockstar Speaker. To get to know you better, I'll just need to get your name from Google. Is oh. that OK? So I can say yes, right? But in this case, I will just write uh, to make sure. And also, um, I don't know, in this case, it's using Google Sign In. So basically, it's asking me permission to check my data, in this case, my name. And he's telling me rocks are speaker, so I already like these assistants. I will say yes. Thanks, Laura Morinigo. What's your favorite color? 
Well, this is the basic question that I mentioned before. As you can see, they already know my name. Uh, the, the kind of pronunciation is weird, but yeah. In this case, I will just put blue. Not bled, blue. <laughs> Laura Morinago, we have a few events that you've been participating this year. Would you like to hear more information? Well, in this case, I just did a simple question uh, just to show you like uh, how I can get involved with a conversation just doing a simple question. In this case, I use color. Uh, they already know which kind of colors uh, are already there, so I don't have to create any topic or something like that. And in this case, uh, he's asking me if I want to know something about my events. And I put, yes. Which topic Firebase, IoT, Android? Well, in this case, the information that I already have is about Firebase, like my favorite topic. So I will put Firebase. Also, I can uh, talk. Here's more information about one of your events. You gave a talk at Google I.O. Extended in Nizhny Novgorod about Firebase and machine learning. Remember to drink a lot of vodka and have fun with one of the best communities in Russia. Cool. It works. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if you see here, I even... Um, let me take this. is the last picture that uh, we have in the Google I.O. extended this year, if, you, if somebody of you were here before. So basically, here I'm combining some information that I have in Firebase as Firebase storage, right? I have this image. And also, I populate some information about my last conference. So uh, it's pretty simple. I hope that you can, uh, that you learn something today. And Always remember that uh, in these cases I mentioned before, uh, this kind of events is an opportunity to connect with other amazing developers uh, like you. And of course, share what you know. Thank you very much. Is there any way to get or use your data not only within the Firebase? Yes. I mean, Firebase is a platform that I suggest to use because it's super simple. Uh, but as we mentioned before, you can use another platforms, another environment uh, that you need. You can choose your own server, your own backend to interact with actions on Google. Not a problem. Okay, it says AI tools becomes much easier to use last days. That's true. Do you think they'll be, they'll be available for non-programmers to create scripts uh, any soon? Yeah, I completely believe that so in terms of also even dialogue flow you don't have to code that much so uh, i believe that right now even as uh, developers we still have a lot of tools around like uh, not only language uh, recognition we have cloud vision api i don't know anything about data science but i can already use cloud vision api to recognize images so in terms of future yeah i believe so yeah completely yeah. Um, it says, do Google use its own NLP library? If it used, could you tell which NLP they've used? Yeah, the one with Google Cloud. It's already done there. It's text-to-speak. Um, I don't know the name, but it's already included in Google Cloud. That's why we are not using that. The part that was mentioned with Google Cloud, that's the NLP. OK. okay. We're done? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, if you have any more questions <laughs> or you would like to chat, feel free to reach out later. And yeah, yeah, have we fun. have to choose three best questions. I will just choose randomly. All questions are available, so cool. Yeah, randomly. thank you very much Not for a your problem. understanding Bye. presentation, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> we are